This episode of Nerd and Tie is sponsored by Ohio Kimono. Ohio Kimono offers authentic Japanese kimonos since 2009 and imports them directly from Kyoto, Japan. You can find more information at ohiokimono.com. On this Fortnite's edition of Nerd and Tie, we move the best and the best. We're back to the history at all. The Venom Space Check Wizard World is having money problems, and of course the Vomit Hat Steve Challenge. This is Nerd and Tie. Woohoo! <sighs> this is it. This is it, guys. We're here. Uh, uh, and eventually they'll even put us on screen. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It's- so uh the secret is right now um as uh like slowly the frame rate slows to a crawl and uh we'll just gonna have to deal with it is that uh i uh say who we are nick and then i'll tell why yeah um issues. all right um this is successfully announcing what's going on i am of course nick Izumi. um Ha- um, wanting to explain the computer troubles is, of course, the magnanimous Trey Dorn. I, I am a person. And smiling and ready to roll is the insurmountable Gen Proc. Sup? Together we are nerd and tie. Yeah, so uh, people who may be witnessing technical issues uh, with the show tonight... Um, Audio, audio, peop, audio listeners are going to get the full experience. That's not a problem. But uh, I am in the process of moving the studio, uh, hence the uh, really boring title card for this episode. Uh, and I am currently, this is the last episode that's going to be recorded in Indiana uh, that's going to be produced out of the Indiana office, which is why the, the background looks different for me on the, the video version, even though I'm in the same spot that I normally sit when I record, although usually rotated. Um, because, uh, the <laughs> normal accoutrements behind me are about 500 miles away from me in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. So I had I to, I had to, I had to remove all the furniture that the studio was set up on, but leave the studio here because, uh, there's an internet connection still <laughs> in Lafayette and we haven't set it up yet in Eau Claire where the, the, the next time you see me in an episode of Nerd and Tie, I'm going to be recording from. So, yeah, it's it's fun and exciting, and <laughs> it is a massive, massive pain in the ass. Um, yeah, no, and I know that feeling. I I hate moving. I always hate moving. It sucks. Yeah. So that's, and and of course, for some reason, uh, like my frame rate, I I look like I'm using a webcam from like, two thousand and three. Mm. Ouch. It has started to rain on my apartment. That's exciting. But, uh, Nick, why don't you take us into our first story? Yeah, uh, we are going from one kind of sad thing to another really sad thing. Uh, just this, uh, just a week ago on, um, uh, well, a week from yesterday, that is, uh, last Sunday, um, we uh, received word that uh, the original TV Batman, one of the uh, truly one of the greats, Adam West, passed away um, after a uh, brief fight with leukemia. Um, came as a shock to pretty much everyone. Uh, real bummer, of course. Again, Adam West, best known for his portrayal as Batman in the '66 TV show, one of the funniest TV shows ever made. Uh, Thanks in no small part to Wes' completely dry and serious read in the face of a completely ridiculous show. Um, Obviously, he will be missed. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. uh, You know, the weird thing about this passing, though, and I got to bring this up, is that sometimes I get really teary or sad when people go, um, and when Adam West died, I was shocked. Yeah. But I wasn't, 
Yeah, you know what I did? I I, I got up. I, I I was told Adam West died. I wrote the obituary for the website, and then I watched the '67 Batman movie. And you know what? Yeah. I laughed. I laughed through the whole thing, well, and I feel like that that's the way Adam West would want to be remembered. Yeah, it's it, just you know someone who made people happy. Well, he's he's my childhood Batman. It's mm-hmm. um. You know, I was I was born in 1980, and while you know, obviously the 60s series, you know, had been off like was obviously not running when I was a child. It was in reruns constantly throughout my childhood, and like I'd watch you know like four to six episodes of that thing a day. But he was also like as a kid, he was also the voice of Batman in every cartoon, mm-hmm. and he was the you know he was he was my Batman as a child. And so, like, he was the definitive version of the character. Like when I dressed up as Batman for Halloween. In the super like powers like costume like <laughs> in my mind I was dressing up as Adam West you know right it's yeah. it's just so sad like it he's such a like and also like he was still doing stuff like they have mm-hmm. uh, the Batman versus Two Face uh, uh, animated movie that is still coming out because he'd already recorded okay, all of his yeah, lines for it recording the lines for that yeah. But like, and he's still been making convention appearances and do, and like he's been actively like you know doing stuff. So it's it's a shock that he's gone. Mm-hmm. Like just absolutely gutting. And he seemed in such good form too. I uh, the um not that uh well I guess that long ago now, but uh, when um the uh, animated movie Return of the Caped Crusaders came out. Yeah, uh, I was really excited for that because that had uh, Burt Ward and Adam West reprising their roles, and it was just kind of an animated take on the anim- on the '60s show. It was a whole lot of fun, and West and Ward didn't sound any different from the the way they did back in the original show. No, no, they didn't. They sounded exactly the same. It just made the show, the movie even all the more charming. It's so weird. Yeah, but I mean, he was eighty-eight, so I guess uh, desperate for a bright side in any of this. At least he lived a long life. Well, it's also I don't think anybody really knew that he had leukemia. Mm-hmm. Like it's it it really wasn't something that that people knew about. So well, and and sources close to him keep using the phrase "short battle with," so it might have been just kind of come out of nowhere yeah he might not have known he had it Mm-hmm. so yeah adam west Wait. he was a dude yeah. rest in peace adam west you were you were the best you were you were my childhood batman's childhood batman and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, go to the Batman the Animated Series and watch the season one episode, Return of the Great Ghost. Oh, yeah. I yeah. forgot about that. That was a fantastic uh-huh. episode. That... Because mm-hmm. that's right. He he voiced the... He played the character who... He played the actor who played the Grey Ghost. Mm-hmm. <laughs> who was the character who inspired... Uh, Bruce Wayne to become a crime fighter in the first place. So, yeah, think about that. How crazy is that? Yeah. I'm just... I am gastroflabbed. I really am. I'm just... I don't know. I'm just... I'm trying to... I, I tr- I'm, right now, I'm just trying to remember Adam West the way that I think he'd want to be remembered as someone who made people happy and he definitely made me happy. Mm-hmm. I can say that much. Yeah. Adam West. Not that much, but yeah. yeah. Rest in peace, Batman. Wow, what a downer. There's got to be something happy going on in the world. Gen, do you know anything happy? Well, <laughs> kind of, mostly happy. Mostly happy. <laughs> um, so I'll last take week. It. <laughs> Last week, the video game world kind of exploded when E3 2017 happened. Um, and if you don't know, E3 stands for the Electronic Entertainment Expo, which happens every year, so that video game com- companies can announce the brand new systems and games that will be coming out this year, next year, future years, 
things we're very like excited about. If if this you're a listener geeky. of this show and you were unaware of that, <laughs> welcome to your first geeky thing, I guess. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> well, I guess uh, welcome to we your have first, snacks. Like, video gamey big video game thing um so because <laughs> i yeah so i sat down and watched every single conference wrote up little thingies about every single conference and i am here to give you your little tidbits of what the big things that happened were um so all the big game companies do conferences announcing their stuff the first one last week was e3 and it was okay. I mean, new sports game, new sports game, new sports games. And I know there are lots of people who love sports games. I'm not one of them. So but there are always like, new uh, sports games. There's always new sports games, and we're never surprised by new sports games. Um, uh, I, I, but, I will amend that statement. What? If If someone comes up with a competitive croquet simulator... Like a croquet game, mm. like video game, then I will be surprised. You, you, I'd say the close. I'd say the closest thing right now would be like Rocket League, maybe. Oh, Rocket League is fun. Yeah, Rocket League is is soccer with but with cars. It looks really great. But that's uh, not croquet. No, not technically. Professional but... competitive croquet, except nothing less. <laughs> well. What ad, what did come out, um, what I was excited for from EA was their new game called A Way Out, which is a couch co-op split screen game about a prison break. Ooh. Where, like, it's, like, yeah, it's, like, crazy. You each play one character, and, like, it's a split screen. So, like, you see yourself on one side, and your partner's on the other side, and you're going around, like, the prison like helping each other get out and it can go different ways depending on which character does what thing. So okay. that was that was the big neat thing that I saw from EA. And then uh Microsoft had their conference and of course it was a a big technical show. Oh, look at all these numbers. Um they announced that they have the new console coming out. Oh, geez. Um, they had they had previously called it Project Scorpio as kind of like a code name, but the new console is the Xbox One X, not to be confused with the Xbox One S. <laughs> <laughs> Great job naming people. Um, but the Xbox One X is going to be the most powerful system ever. It's going to be the most gorgeous system ever. Everything's going to play in 4K, 4K. Ah. Um. They announced, like, so many games. They just, like, wow. They, like, I'm pretty sure the announcer guys said they had, like, 42, like, titles. Yeesh. And, and wow. like, <laughs> so I'm not going to go through, like, all of them. Some of the bigger <laughs> ones is that, like, there's a new Assassin's Creed game, which is the origin story, which is pretty neat. It takes place in Egypt, so that's really cool. Um, there's actually a lot of uh, indie games that they announced that was really cool. Um, sea of Thieves, Super Lucky Tail, Cuphead. I'm really personally excited for Cuphead. It's based off of like really, really old animation like the early early stuff it is so cool um yeah there's just like a ton of stuff um bethesda did their press conference and not much new there um they have doom and fallout 4 coming to vr so the weird thing the weird thing about this e3 was that there was so much skyrim there was Skyrim so much everywhere. Skyrim stuff. Like this game is six years old. Why? Why? Like, uh, uh, like Skyrim. Like <laughs> Skyrim is getting like a special modding thing where you can buy official mods for it. Ooh, it's there's the card game video game is getting a Skyrim expansion. Ooh, Skyrim is coming to the Switch. Ooh. 
cool, neat. What's new? <laughs> like, uh, that is really weird. Yeah, that is like, like they're huh. so gung ho about freaking Skyrim, like, <laughs> and none of us are like really that excited. Well, I, I think uh, the idea of the you know that you'd be able to play it like with the Switch version that you could play it. Yeah, we're carrying I mean, around and the VR really version Skyrim on the go. Yeah, and like VR is really cool. Um, and to be f- and to be fair, the Nintendo players haven't gotten to play it yet. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, but the only new games announced from Bethesda this year are The Evil Within Two and Wolfenstein Two. Wolfenstein Two looks really really good. Like, Wolfenstein Two looks awesome. It looks so good. I'm yeah. really I- excited to see this thing. I'm still oh. kicking myself for not picking up New Order yet, because that looked really good, too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm just going to keep rolling through these, because like, I wrote Do so it. much about Do it. We <laughs> want to hear it. And I'm <laughs> so, and video viewers so are looking next... at the title card, because I'm going to try to fix the video problems with hardware. <laughs> Have fun while I talk about Ubisoft. Ubisoft um, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, did a big, like, crazy production as usual. Lots of lights of flashing things and, like, ah, craziness. Um, crazy things like Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. <laughs> In- interesting what? mix. Yeah, it's gonna, it's like. <sighs> That's a weird and real thing. Yeah, and it's a tactical, like, fighting game. Okay. That seems legit. It's like, it's. I mean, it looks really, like, the way they, like, smushed it together, like, they did a really good job of integrating, like, the worlds together, and, like, the tactics look really cool. Like, I highly suggest you, like, check this out. It's just kind of like, I didn't think that would be a thing, but it's a thing, and it works. Video games have a weird history of that, though. Like, uh... Uh, like we've been working, we've all been working the anime con scene so long that Kingdom Hearts is kind of blasé for us now. Yeah, but remember when that was announced? Out, and yeah, what, yeah, and how <laughs> terrible that idea seemed. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. Um, I'm really excited for the new South Park game, the Fractured But Whole. Um, <laughs> that's such a classy it? title. Yeah. Uh, I love I love that. Um, they're very proud of their new. You know, I just game. finally got that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. How Thanks did I fun. not get that? <laughs> um, but Ubisoft is very proud of their new pirate battle game called Skull and Bones, which looks really pretty. Um, it's gonna be like. It seems to be like multiplayer ships. Or, like, you control an entire ship, and you can switch from, like, each crew member to, like, do stuff on your ship. I could be the it, god of the sea. Right? It looks really cool. Um, okay. They had... Oh, uh, the new... Um, okay, so there's this new space battle game where you play as a spaceship, and you battle other spaceships, and it's called Starlink. But the cool thing is that they're doing kind of an amiibo takeoff where you get collectible toys and you can use them with the Switch controller. And the neat thing about these toys is that you can take parts off of the off of like one toy and put parts from another toy on it and your ship in the video game will do the same thing. Hmm. That sounds cool. Right? Like, I, I have That's my red crazy. ship, and I take the thrusters off, and I put these big yellow thrusters on, and in the game, my red ship now has big yellow thrusters. Like, it's really, <laughs> like, that's really cool. Um, This much closer to Gunflow Battle. Right? <laughs> this much closer. Right? Yeah. Ugh. One day. Um, Far Cry 5 is coming. Um. With a plot set in the middle of a cult-ridden American town. Yeah, that's caused some controversy from some uh, jackasses. As soon as I, 
As, oh, as soon as I saw Same it. Same people who like, are upset oh. about Wolfenstein 2, though. Really. Well, you know, it's it's funny. These are the same people who will defend any portrayal of Middle Easterners as uh, terrorists. But you can't accept I'm the... Just, like, yeah, no. All I know is, like, my first thought when I saw, like, the new Wolfenstein and the new Far Cry is just, like, these games seem to be quite topical to our times right now. <laughs> You think so? Just a little bit? That's it. Like, just, uh, I don't know if it's really subtle. meant for that, but, like, that's that's really topical. Good job, guys. Oh. Yeah. But that wasn't the biggest surprise of Ubisoft's conference. The biggest, hugest surprise was that they announced Beyond Good and Evil 2. <laughs> that is... That's, like... That's like saying Half Life Three. That's yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. And and this the the cinematic trailer they created for it is absolutely gorgeous. I highly recommend that you find this trailer and you watch it because it is so beautiful. Huh. And it is like it. Yeah, it's really gorgeous. And, okay. And like the creator was like crying on stage and it's just like oh i feel for you i feel so happy for you that your game is like finally done or <laughs> like getting done and like it's getting out and we're all really excited for you and that was just like a really good feel good moment it was just like ah oh, yes after so long this is coming yes that's uh, yeah well, i almost didn't even think that was ever going to happen i, I was I'm pretty like, much like yeah. you know like I was I was I was pretty confident it wasn't gonna happen, and then it happened. Mm. I mean, like I don't even like follow stuff, but Beyond Good and Evil Two is like the kind of joke that you know, in the year two thousand, we made jokes about Duke Nukem Forever. Mm. Yep. Except then that finally came out and turned out not to be any good, but still. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, who knows how it's gonna be? I just know that it looks pretty. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be uh, anything. Could be a boat. Right? right? What else looked pretty was Sony's presentation. Because they they usually go really theatrical. Mm -hmm. So they opened their presentation with like this like band sitting on a rug and there's a sitar and a violin and like very like I want to say Indian that area um, band and there was like this waterfall and it was making like patterns in the waterfall and that was all because we're getting a new uncharted game oh of course uncharted the lost wow. legacy wow right like that's oh. intense yeah crazy you know what else is crazy monster hunter world monster hunter coming to a console like that's so exciting that's so exciting i mostly play monster hunter on my 3ds so yeah i know that feeling yeah like so exciting. Um, and they also did a VR block showcasing like one, two, three, four, five, six, six different games that are coming to VR for them. They're very excited about VR. They're very excited about that. And guess what is coming to VR? Skyrim. Ooh. Kiss Skyrim. Hey, Which will be really cool. Escape the Skyrim. It'll be really cool in VR, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would, I would play Skyrim in VR. Right? Yeah, like, who wouldn't? Um. But I, of course, don't have anything like that could remotely handle VR. For God's sakes, I right. barely. It took me forever to get the computer to stop choking on producing this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we could well, afford computers that would let us play Skyrim. Yeah. Um, um, we should just become androids, like, in Detroit Become Human. Zing, zing, zing. That's a new one that's coming out. Um, it's by the guy who did uh, Heavy Rain. Oh, jeez. Uh, so, yeah. So that'll another... be uh, light, light fiction, is what you're saying? Very lighthearted. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Oh yeah, yep. Not dark at all. Feel good no. game of the summer. Yep, definitely. A lot of um, bright colors, pastels, freedom yeah. of uh, what you can do in the game. Yep, 
a lot of <laughs> a lot of smiles in that game. A lot of smiles also going to be in God of War Four. That was sarcasm. Is that that's still a thing? That's a thing. That's a thing. He's still... a dad. God of wasn't, War Four. He's wasn't a he a dad. dad before? And then well, he... in this game, it's like him. Okay, I'm taking a wild guess and like. I'm guessing he's going, like, because it's all, like, ice and snow, so I'm guessing he's going after the Norse gods. Yes, yes, he is. So, that's interesting, but, like, wow. he's showing his son how to, like, kill gods and stuff, so that's kind of cool. He's got a great big bushy beard. And, yes, God of War 4, he's a dad, is coming. I can't oh, wait till God of War 7 movie. when... The son has to kill Kratos, <laughs> and he can. And Kratos be, "Why would you do this?" Or you can, and then and, and, and the son could be like, "I learned it from you, Dad. I learned it from you." <laughs> I I just did that whole setup for a stupid joke that no one. I sort of got it. No, that yeah. was, that's good. That was real good. It wasn't good. Also being set up, um, we got footage of the newest superhero video game, which is Spider Man. Yes. They've been teasing that game for a while. Oh, it looked really good. Um, it's done in the same like play style as the Arkham games, which were all like really, really good. I I still think the 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 like I know they're doing it to try to differentiate it from the film series, yeah. but I really think that 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 version of the Spider-Man costume they're doing looks really goofy, like with the big giant yeah. white spider, because white. it's not really like. Well, well, there's probably going to be alternate costumes in the game anyway, so you can probably switch it out. Yeah. Yeah, and I and part of it is like they are going for like a brighter, a bit more goofier like appearance, mainly to differentiate, I think, between from like the Dark Knight, and just because like to really reflect Spider-Man. I don't know. Has like, there ever really been a dark, grim, and gritty version of Spider-Man? Challenge accepted. I'm gonna find it. Well, I'm and, and, the, it, and I don't mean ones like uh, like that noir one doesn't count. <laughs> oh. But I will say, I will say there was a little um, thing at the very end of the uh, fizzle reel. Gave us a little treat of Miles Morales. Ooh. So. So yeah, he's a thing in that game. Um, so yeah, maybe you will be able to switch between like suits or Spider-Man themselves. I'm not sure, but it was just really cool that they like were like, "Hey, here's this one. We like him too. We know you like him. Here he is." So that was really nice. Ah, Spider-Man. Spider -Man. And. And while Nick looks for Gritty Spider-Man, the right. last... Mm. Craven's Last Hunt and the death of John DeWolf. Those were dark. Spider-Man gets buried alive in the former and he uh, takes revenge on a maniac with a shotgun in the latter. That's not that grim dark. Oh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> It's not like it's Frank Miller dark. I'm, I'm sure he was no Frank Miller Spider Man. Actually, I'm sure he I'm was really still making jokes on the Frank way Miller down. <laughs> I'm really happy there's no Frank Miller Spider Man. Who am I kidding? I think well, while we, you guys are going, I think we down, need to make I'm... a parody Frank Miller Spider Man. Guys, what else is there again? <laughs> make a Twitter account. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go up to the glorious world of Nintendo. Um, they had a bunch of new games, a bunch of new content for like the Skyrim. Switch. Skyrim is coming to the Switch. <laughs> that was about it. I don't think they. I don't think they even like showed Skyrim as part of their presentation. So, like, actually, like they showed it in all the early Switch promotional materials. Yeah, That's exactly, true. and in some of the earlier presentations. So, like, why show it twice? Mm. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. When they can show you Super Mario coming. Odyssey five more times. Oh, because 
yeah so super mario odyssey um Looks new awesome. mario games anthropomorphic hat that can take over other beings yeah yeah bit creepy but we'll run with it it looks good is creepy your but... way of saying awesome because uh yeah that's <laughs> well you can inhabit other human beings in new donk city would you like to be like in inha- like parasitically inhabited by mario it's gotta be weird but, but most importantly what's her name's back in new donk city um the the girlfriend pauline pauline yes Pauline, yeah, she's the mayor. Pauline returns to the Mario franchise. Right? Good on you. I'm really glad she did something with herself after that whole King Kong incident. I mean, a Donkey Kong incident. Well, and let's remember that the Donkey Kong that kidnapped her isn't like isn't the the DK. It's it's DK's dad, because right. the Donkey Kong you play in most of the games now is Donkey Kong Junior. Not to be confused with Diddy Kong, his son. Isn't that? Mm-hmm. Isn't that Cranky Kong? Cranky Kong is the Donkey Kong in the original Donkey Kong. My okay. God. And there's one in between Cranky and Donkey Junior. No, Donkey, Donkey Kong? Kong Junior is the okay. is the Donkey Kong that you play normally as DK. It's that Diddy Kong is the son of Donkey Kong Junior, who is the son of Donkey Kong, aka Cranky Kong. Got. It. Timeline established. I like the way that entire conversation, the video just saw Nick nodding as you and I talked. <laughs> Whatever works. Um, but yeah, there's going to be um, Xenoblade Chronicles Kong, 2 Kong, coming. Kong. A brand new Kirby game, which looks like it's going to be multiplayer, so that's really neat. A new Yoshi game. Um, a new Fire Emblem game. Um Led the Breath of the Wild is getting two new DLC packs with a bunch of new amiibos. Nice. Um, Rocket League, Rocket League, as we mentioned earlier, um, actually will be coming to the Switch, so that'll be really neat. And the big surprise of the whole thing: Metroid Prime Four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Although I was also really excited about the uh, Metroid 2 remake for the 3DS, yes. which I basically 100% guarantee I'm picking up because uh, classic Metroid is awesome. Classic uh, Metroid that I can carry with me in my pocket is better. Yes. Yeah. Um. You can only play Zero Mission so many times. Exactly. <laughs> But yeah, the only thing like I remember watching this with my boyfriend and he was just like, "What?" <laughs> like cuz all they did was just show the title and they did nothing else, absolutely nothing. And he was just gutted and it's just like, "You can't even show us like anything." <laughs> no. But there will be new amiibos, and the Metroid amiibo is going to be squishy, and I'm really excited, and I want to squish it. That's awesome and ridiculous. I, I and know. Awesome. I know. So, I'm happy. so yeah. Um, after the conferences uh, streamed online, the rest of the week, if you were at E3, you could like go to the booths of all the people and like actually like try out the games if you waited in line for two hours and all sorts of fun stuff if you'd like to know more go ahead and check out the articles i wrote on the nerd and tie website i have linked restreams of the uh conferences so you could get the whole list of games if i didn't announce anything that you are really into and yeah Video games. Hmm. Happen. Video games! Video games. And most of these games are happening like 2018. There's, yeah. there's a few that are coming out this year. But most of them are slated for next year or even further. 
Well, and that's, okay. you know, it's the nature of a conference like this. Actually, the interesting thing about mm-hmm. E3 is just that it's a it's a major trade conference that still, like, gets announcements when, like, so much of the tech industry's moved away from that. Like, you know, when's the last time you heard of, you know, like, a major tech... Con- you know, like, the, the video game industry is the only real part of the tech industry that still, like, actually uses their conference. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, because, you know, Apple, you know, like, Apple, Microsoft, all these people, like, they, they don't do stuff at CES or Mobile World Congress anymore. It's all, you know kind of moved to like their own events you know apple really was the first to do that like you know when they just announced um uh the new uh vr capable imax uh that that came out just just recently it's like last week or so um and of course all of their uh their new ar kit uh for uh for ios for building augmented reality applications and uh, of course, one of the things they they touted as a uh, see, I'm, this is a long transition, but it's getting there. No, go. That uh, one of the one of the things, of course, they touted that would would potentially using AR kit is one of the uh, probably one of the most well known uses of AR in you know that the most most of our listeners probably have at least played with, gotten to play with on a device they already own, and that's of course Pokemon Go. And ah. ah See, I got there, and mind you, you know, most of us have turned <laughs> that AR camera off to save battery. Um, <laughs> yep, it yep. worked well enough to use as a segue. So uh, Niantic's been actually doing a lot of uh, announcements uh, and uh, been doing some updates to be with the first anniversary of Pokemon Go coming up uh, in in July, and uh, they've they've got a couple of things happening. First and foremost, we're in the middle of the big update on the gyms. As we're recording this, uh, they're redoing the gym system entirely. Instead of the uh, the old system where it was all CP based for where you are in the gym, and you could have ten people in there, and then either train up your own your team's gyms or challenge it, uh, they are they're they're completely redoing the gym system. Um, and earlier Ooh. today, they they locked down all the gyms. And uh, in like as we're recording this, I'm looking at my Pokemon. And half of them have come back and half of them haven't. So, like, we are mid-update. Like, they are manually updating these. Because the ones that came back mm-hmm. are coming back with their full health. So, um, like, out of the eight gyms I was in, three of them, my Pokemon still think are they're in there. Um, but uh, they're, they're going to be doing it where it's going to be a first in, first out with the Pokemon in there. Um, it's going to be a maximum of six. You cannot have any repeat Pokemon. So if someone's put a Vaporeon in, you can't put a Vaporeon in. But because it's also first in, first out, it's not going to be like your it. You know, it, your CP level doesn't matter for where you're going to fall in the battle. It's all about who's okay. going into the gym. Um, also, uh, Pokemon, if they aren't fed berries by members of your team, like you could feed your own Pokemon berries. But or other people can, but they've got to go to the gym to do it. Um, they will eventually come back if they're not fed berries, and that'll um, prevent uh, kind of players who stop playing but left a really high CP Pokemon in a gym. Okay. Or or if you put a really high CP Pokemon in a gym once and they've been stuck there for months, like this one Vaporeon that I put in this rural gym six months ago that is still sitting there and he's he wasn't even a good one like he was one of my lower level vaporians i tossed him in there thinking that he was going to come back so i could continue to train him up because i thought the gym would go back down and he's still there let's say nope well he won't be tonight you know when they finish kicking all of us all the pokemon out of all the gyms but uh, so that that's a that's actually a really cool update that they're doing, and there's there's way more to that, and you can go to the Niantic's official website to get the full details on that. But the more interesting things they're they're also going to be doing group raids, um, where up to twenty players can effectively fight a boss Pokemon, and if they do it within five minutes, a bunch of rare stuff will spawn around the players, um, and that is going to be rolled out over the next couple of weeks. Um, but they've also, uh, Niantic has announced in celebration of the first anniversary of Pokemon Go, they're hosting Pokemon Go Fest in Chicago's Grant Park on July 22nd. Um, and tickets are going on sale uh, today, 
on the official website. Uh, I say today, but we're releasing this on the 20th. So they went on sale today on the 19th. Um, and it's sold out. Like, like they put the tickets out today, like on on, nine, on the 19th, which we're recording this, because, of course, we always record it the night before we release it. They were released on the 19th, and they sold out on the 19th. Uh, so... Uh, but no one knows really. So when they first announced this, no one really knew what it was. Like mm-hmm. the there were zero details. So all these people ran out and bought tickets, not really knowing what they were buying for. But it's just gonna be there's gonna be uh, in, like a ton of Pokemon there. They're gonna have a mass spawning in, in, in Grand Park. Uh, there's gonna have uh, challenges and rewards, which. Um, mm-hmm. Which they're like work together with thousands of trainers in the park and millions around the world to complete challenges throughout the day and unlock amazing in-game rewards globally. I don't know what that means. Uh, there is a there there will be an exclusive in-app medal for people who are there, which is you know that's not that's bad. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and special Poké stops. Oh yeah, that's the other thing with the gym updates. Gyms will also function as Poké stops. So if you live in an area oh. that has a gym but no Poké stop, which is a really frustrating thing that can happen to people in smaller towns, where they the like there are some spots where it's just a gym and nothing else, it will also function as a Poké stop. Um, that's nice. Yeah, uh, but the special Poké stops apparently, which will just be. Uh, that will aw- award special 2K eggs, which can only be obtained in Grant Park. Um, they're going to have separate team lounges uh, and then, uh, like, photo ops, which... So I'm assuming they're going to have commemorative experience by snapping photos with your favorite Pokemon at the many awesome... Uh, so I'm assuming they're going to have guys in costume. I'm just... You're going to have a guy in a Pikachu costume. That's really what that means. Uh, God, I hope so. Yeah, God. so that's uh, that's a thing from so from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. in Grant Park in Chicago, uh, that's gonna happen, and it's already sold out, so you can't go. But the the whole thing is when they announced it, it's like they really didn't tell anyone what it was. <laughs> like I'm still like, this is the thing that people are paying to go to, and uh, I mean I guess a lot of people live in Chicago, but. I really hope there's nothing exclusive there that really can't ever be obtained. Any like, I mean, an exclusive medal is one thing. That's fine. But like, I mm-hmm. hope there aren't like any like, if a legendary were to show up there, I would be really kind of irritated. <laughs> because this isn't like you know, like I know that like in the original, um, in the original Pokemon, like Mew was released as, like at at certain events. But you know, you could trade Pokemon with the original Pokemon. So like enough people went to those things then like things got traded around to other people uh but you can't trade in pokemon go because of the the chances of hacking are so high that they've been right. you know uh, they want to do that but they've been avoiding it um also they're going to be doing um uh the there there's a, po- a pikachu event in yokohama this august in japan and they have a another company that's going to be doing like events across Europe um, that are separate from this. Uh, but uh, I think uh, I think the most important thing is just that uh, the gyms are going to be cool again because like gyms were fine for players like me who are kind of power players. Where like I mean I wouldn't even call myself a power player because like in the region I've been playing for this whole game I'm really kind of a a mid-level player like i've got serious pokemon but there are real serious players out there and uh i think this is the only way to make it so players who aren't like really as intensely into it can like be competitive i would like that and I, yeah and I, I think that's yeah. really cool I, I i'm i'm really excited about it yeah so so sure. pokemon go is still relevant man i swear yeah. <laughs> well, that's a. I'm sure that someone's gonna go. People are still playing Pokemon Go because that always happens for someone. I'm like, yes, a lot of us. Yeah. Just it's not true. like, is it gonna ever be at the peak at the beginning? No, no game not. is like that. Look at the bell curve of any multiplayer game. Like, yeah. um, with there are only a few rare exceptions where like it stays high and then gets bigger. 
It's what are you talking mind. about? People are still... There's more people playing Lineage 2 than there have been. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. But it's, you know, it's with any game. You know, it's the it spikes right away at the beginning, and then the people who are really into it stay with it. Especially mm-hmm. with a game that's free to play. Like, you're going to get mm-hmm. a lot of drive-bys. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. Is it? I think so. Okay. Hey, Nick, why don't you talk about something else entirely different with no segue right. really prepared? There's not really anything, any really good segue for this one. So, um, as we've talked about previously, Sony is still going forward with their Spider-Man universe movies because everyone wants in on that sweet cinematic universe money. So they're doing Venom with Tom Hardy, and then they're doing the black cat uh, silver sable movie because uh, yeah because reasons because re- anyway um at a recent press conference um a representative from sony said oh yeah um well amy pascal Venom, like head of uh, their movie stuff oh excuse, excuse me yes amy pascal um said oh yeah uh venom and the uh Black and Silver movies are totally part of the same cinematic universe as Spider-Man. I believe the word she used was adjunct. Okay, yeah. There's still, uh, if if you look at the uh, video from that, though, uh, the look on uh, Kevin Feig's uh, from Marvel's face when she said that is this kind of look of sheer terror. Well, okay, Uh, so, yeah, okay, so let's let's go back to that. Uh, Mm Mm-hmm. The, uh, the, there's been a lot, of, so, um, the, to give context for those who haven't seen the clip or don't really know, it's, uh, it's Amy Pascal and, uh, Kevin Feige are sitting next to each other, um, being talked about Spider-Man and, uh, they got asked about, uh, the Tom Hardy Venom movie and, uh, she made a, she stated that there's potential that Tom Holland Spider-Man could show up in those movies and that they are adjuncts. To the Spider-Man, like they're part of a Spider-Man continuity they're building. Um, now, and then Kevin Fe- Kevin Feige, uh, his expression um, is could be interpreted one of two ways: either he was new, either it was news to him, or he was thinking slyly. But it's it's especially confusing though because Kevin Feige has repeatedly, repeatedly stated now that the Venom movie will not be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm-hmm. So what I think is happening is that the uh, Venom movie and the uh, Silver and Black, uh, which Silver and Black actually would work fine without Spider-Man involved at all. So, uh, right. But I think that what they're, what they're saying is that these films will exist uh, compatibly with Spider-Man Homecoming and that Spider-Man exists in the continuity of these films, but they are aren't ever going to be... I think really what the thing is that... Uh, what I think is happening here is that Sony's going to make these compatible with Spider-Man Homecoming and that Spider-Man, that, that Tom Holland Spider-Man can show up, but they will never reference the rest of the MCU and the rest of the MCU will never reference these characters. I have such... And I have two thoughts about this. Them. I have two thoughts about this. First thought okay. is... Um, that it still kind of makes it part of the MCU. Uh, uh-huh. It just may end up being an apocryphal corner. It's like when you read a Star Trek novel. Mm. All the stuff from the Star Trek TV series takes place in the universe of that Star Trek novel, but that Star Trek novel isn't part of the official continuity. Right. Uh, so that's... that's that's. I mean, that's kind of the, the, the main way I'm thinking about this, so... I'm kind of okay with it that way. Like, whatever. I, I just think it sounds like a mess. I, I think it's dumb that they even but, are still trying to do the cinematic universe thing. Cause but it's... let me. Well, yeah, but the song's got a lot of money around. But here's the other thing. Um, so the Netflix shows are part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm-hmm. They reference the Avengers all the time. Now, I understand that the, the TV series have all been taking place prior to Age of Ultron. 
like the reason why the later stuff is because if you look at the time the defenders timeline they're still much earlier in the timeline than the rest of the mcu right um but you'll notice that none of those characters are ever getting referenced in any other mcu works be it on even agents of shield which references everything Mm -hmm. so um but we still have no problem accepting those characters as part of the mcu and it's because the television di- division is very separate from the film division now, where they didn't used to be. When they started this plan, mm-hmm. they were all one thing, and then they they splintered. Um, and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has worked very hard to try to keep itself connected to the films, but the, the Defenders series don't really have any need to. Mm-hmm. Because it's like their whole thing is how the movies have affected New York, and then they're in New York, and that's all they care about for the most part. Right. Um, so I think that like, I think it'll be fine. It'll be just as connected to the rest of the MCU as the Netflix shows. Okay. Yeah, I guess I, I'm just kind of, for me, I'm just kind of shaking my head and I'm just like, I, I just don't understand the whole trying to build out a Spider-Man cinematic universe. Well, I think, I think, I think the more important thing in that interview with Amy Pascal, like if the more important thing in that clip is that I don't think she understands why the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been successful at all. No um, one understands why the Marvel no. Cinematic Universe has been successful at all. But I do. It, well, okay, so the reason why it's been well, successful... I, I'm saying that yeah. no studios do, because they keep well, wanting to get on the the yeah. the movie bandwagon, but they don't want to do the work for Ke- it. Kevin Feige knows why, because... Or mm-hmm. Feige, or Feige, or however I'm supposed to pronounce his name. Um, he knows right. why. And it's because, um, and really, and this is the the reason why it's been successful is because even though, like, she's like, there's many chapters in the book, and so fans feel like they have to get, they, you know, they need to see the next one in the series, and like that's what Amy Pascal is saying. But really, the reason why the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, has been successful is because you don't need to see all of them, because you can just jump on and see some of them. And yes, yes, you do get a better experience, I think, if you watch all of them. But mm-hmm. if like if you were just watching the Captain Am- movies with Captain America in them, like skipped the Iron Man movies and only saw him in Avengers movies and Civil War, or you know, or if you were watching the Thor, like you, if you were just following a character, mm-hmm. like people could go and watch. Uh, people who watch Doctor Strange didn't need to see the earlier films at all. Like it's. I mean, like, you could, and there's some stuff in there that's maybe a little, you know, nicer, but if you didn't, you would have still probably enjoyed that movie just as much. Not unlike the way I read the comics, actually, where I follow the characters I like and I don't really pay attention that's, to the... the... The the whole reason why the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been successful is that they followed the what the, what the, comics, con- what the comics get right, is that you follow the characters you like, and then when you get to the big crossover event... You know, maybe you fill out on the other characters or maybe you just watch the crossover event and let the context of the story tell you what you need to know about those other people. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Like it's. Yeah. Everyone wants in on this on these cinematic universe dollars, though, and they don't. It, uh, it, it's also the same thing I've been hearing people say about the Tom Cruise mummy movie. It's they want to do. They want in on the cinematic universe thing, but they focus on the world building and the setup for the next movie and make that the main focus, unlike the Marvel movies where that's background set dressing. Yeah. Because the the foreground thing is the movie itself, which is perfectly fine on its own. The mummy and then the yeah. world building is the is the background. Have stuff. you have you seen the mummy yet? I haven't. I have. I've heard it though. It is, I've heard it's physically painful to watch. It's not physically painful. It's okay. So the problem with the movie is just that it's not anything. It's like it's not bad. It's just not good. Like you're never scared mm-hmm. in a mummy, which is fine because you know, like I, you know, if it was just not scary, the Brendan Fraser mummy films, which there are two good ones. You know, those weren't those those two good ones weren't scary, but they were adventures. And, you know, so their action clearly they're going for an action angle with the Tom Cruise movie because you cast Tom Cruise. Um, mm-hmm. But so the mummy's never scary. And but the action isn't really compelling enough. Like, I love a good Tom Cruise action film. I 
I go out and see the Mission Impossible movies and watch him hang off a plane, and that's fun because right. he's freaking crazy. But you never really – well, but the problem is that Tom Cruise never really fe- like acts like he's scared. Mm-hmm. But he's bad at acting scared in general. Like in a, in a Mission Impossible movie, that's fine. He's playing Ethan Hunt, and he's, you know – highly trained secret agent and yeah he's supposed to be like a highly trained government scout or whatever like he's military guy in the the movies in this mummy movie but you know that doesn't really prepare you for undead woman you know <laughs> like right. uh i think i honest to god think that this is my analysis is that if they had made this exact movie only recap like switched the parts that tom cruise and jake johnson were playing it mm. would have been amazing because, like, even don't even change the script. Like, literally, <laughs> just put a comedic actor in that part and put the serious guy as, like, the the buddy who's barely in it. And I think that bait and switch would have been great. Uh, but, I mean, that's Alex Kurtzman made a movie. Mm-hmm. It's what happens. Uh, uh, but uh, the bad news is the mummy's doing really well internationally. Like... It's uh, been huge. It's been making a like it. It kind of flopped hard in the U.S., but it, it like blew up overseas. So you're uh, telling me I might be stuck with the dark. The universe. dark universe. Well, it's their third try to. Lo- it's their third attempt to launch the shared movie universe with Dracula Untold was supposed to be part of it, and then it flopped so hard they went no. Ah, oh, we're kidding. And the the werewolf movie they made, I don't remember what it was called. And that's how well it did that I don't remember what it's called. And that also, like, those two were supposed to both be starts of this this shared cinematic universe. And so this time, like, they even put the Dark Universe graphic on in front of the movie. Like, they're, like, so proud of, like... And I gotta say, that Dark Universe name is really inconvenient because that's the working title of the Justice League Dark movie. And so those of us who run blogs where we have to tag things and we're already using the Dark Universe tag. Uni- and so the our tag for Dark Universe on, on Nerd and Tie is Universal's Dark Universe because screw you guys. I think actually the uh, I think DC is contemplating legal action. Is this episode just like riddled with bad names of things? Everything that is poorly the named. Theme. Like, come on. And also, speaking of like uh, movies that didn't really do well here, but are doing like did well out, like elsewhere. Um, it's kind of weird that like the movies that we, I don't know, like the the movies that like flopped here mm-hmm. seem to be seem to do really well overseas for example the warcraft movie yeah that was a yeah, weird work. one right? but there, like, there are situations it, it didn't do it didn't do well here but in china it's doing like crazy good yeah it did crazy well in china but i mean also right? that, that that works more in one direction though because yeah. uh pacific rim which is an amazing film that was yep. nerd and ties pick of best movie of the year when it came out um yep. that's 2013 Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that was our that was our first like when we did our first year in review like best of the year show that was that was un- han- unanimously our like and one of the few times where we had a unanimous decision for best movie of the year, um, mm-hmm. and uh, but that didn't do well in the U.S. but it did well in China, which is why we're getting that sequel with John Boyega. Um, so yeah it's i think i think it's a matter of well what you have to remember is that a lot of these movies now like especially uh china china's the the big influence on the worldwide grosses Mm -hmm. Um, well i mean the mummy's got this tom cruise factor where tom cruise is still a big name overseas like he's tom cruise's name is really what's selling tickets to the mummy um Mm -hmm. but like with uh with warcraft um like independence day the independence day 2 did well in china um it didn't do well enough to save the franchise, but like uh, we have to remember is that a lot of the stuff that feels rehashed or cliched, a lot of the things that came before it, the things that these are rehashes of weren't released in China initially. Um, Right. So Uh. that's a big deal. And, you know, frankly, Uh. I mean, Transformers five comes out um, 
between this episode and our next one. And the Transformers Gosh. the Transformers franchise is one of the highest grossing franchises of all time. And it's five movies. And it is made like it's in the same ballpark as like Star Wars per film at this point. And but, but like in the words of uh, Lindsay Ellis, um, formerly in the, in the Nostalgia Chick, the uh, the Transformers movies are so weird because they're some of the highest grossing movies in box office history, and yet people don't generally seem to like them. Ah, which so you most watched other that video high too. grossing movies can say. Well, I think pe- there are people who like them, but they just don't remember them. I, I, well, I mean, like, I, I guess, like, I, I will say the fir- I, I really liked the first one. So did I. And uh, I, yeah. I enjoyed about half of the second one. Don't remember. Well, no one can remember the third one. I can remember the third one because it was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. No, the fourth one's the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. I haven't seen the fourth one because I saw the third one and I'm like, well, I'm never doing this again. I saw half of the fourth <laughs> one and I left. Uh, the third one, I honestly can't tell you anything about what happened in it besides uh, the fact that they shot some scenes at the Milwaukee Art Museum and it's really obviously the Milwaukee Art Museum and it pulled me out of the movie completely because it's like the landmark they play on the morning news, like the shot I of the... I remember th- you mm. saying that. I'm I, like, see, I, I can't... Remember it- I remember the third one really well because I remember sad homeless Megatron. I remember him and his poncho. I do remember, I remember that remember visual, but I don't remember zebras. why it happened. I remember him yelling at zebras. I remember him blowing up the Abe Lincoln statue so he can have somewhere to sit down. Uh, I remember him thanklessly helping Optimus Prime fight only to get his spine ripped out. I don't remember that. That happened. You happened. But the first one's good. Yeah, the first one is good. I agree. But it's, you know, Michael... My, yeah, it's not the worst movies. They're not the worst movies that Michael Bay's ever made. That'd be Pain and Gain. Pain and Gain is the worst six hours of my life. Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> I have no I, idea what you're talking about. Uh, have you ever... It's just like Cat Soup is the longest two hours of my life, even though it's a 30-minute anime. Gotcha. Because it's so slow and painful that it... Simple joke. No, I don't know what... uh, Oh, Pain and Gain. Gain. Pain and Gain is a movie starring Mark Wahlberg and The Rock and a bunch of people who are really talented and it is wholly unwatchable. Because it's it's Michael Bay's attempt to make his uh, personal movie. It's also a black comedy, only it's based off of real events. And when your main character is horrifically bludgeoning someone to death by hitting him in the head with a weight, it's hard to like them still. And it's even harder. Like, it's not... You can do black comedy where you've got a horrible main character or characters who do bad things. But, you, like, you can't shoot it like a Michael Bay movie. That's just generally good advice for any movie, though. Yeah, it's okay. Oh. It tanked. You know, speaking of things uh, that uh, financially made no sense <laughs> and are doing poorly, <laughs> nice. Good uh, let's talk about Wizard World. Oh, man. Wizard World's money problems are continuing. We've we've talked about this in the past. So Wizard World, like, overexpanded, started losing money. Well, unfortunately, things aren't. They're still not going great for the company. Even um, ever having, even after having scaled back operations to fewer conventions and securing outside funding from Bristol Investment Group, who Bristol Investment Fund, whose whose owner sits on the board of Wizard World, uh, the company still managed to lose over one point two eight million in the first quarter of twenty seventeen. Jimmy, man. Uh, revenue per Wizard World show is is down ninety nine thousand dollars. Like, just under $100,000 uh, per show from 2016. And with the con markets continue, like, getting crowded, like, 
this is not going well. They're, so what it means is the they're making less money per show, which means their margin is dropping per show in a market where more and more people are launching. You know, they're competing with Reed Pop. They're competing with uh, uh, what? what's the name of the, the left field media, left field media, which uh, spun off from a bunch of people who used to work for Reed Pop. Um, so left field media and Reed Pop are both like launch, like doing all these big events also. And along with local Comic Con starting, like even more and more people trying to jump onto the big box con wagon, Wizard Ooh. World overflowed the market, and now, now, you know, it's just, it it's just going downhill fast. As the bigger and bigger stars of the conventions, the smaller and smaller the margins, and if less people go to the shows, they're making less and less money per show, and I just they they are just hemorrhaging money. They are just hemorrhaging money. Like, I don't believe that I have managed to go through, like, we've, we've, we've been checking in on their financials every once in a while, and it's just been not, is Wizard World making money? It is, how much are they losing? And it mm. always starts with something million. Jeez. I, I can't say I'm surprised. No, I was going to say the exact same thing. Not surprised at all. Yeah, no, it's. I, mean, I honestly, the market's super saturated right now. It's, it's well, it's, here's the thing, like when Wizard World started with Wizard World Chicago, which is still their biggest con, which is still the biggest con in the Midwest. Last I checked, it brings in huge numbers. Um, mm -hmm. but here's the thing: it used to be a big deal if you went to a con and you saw, you know, X star of the show. Because there weren't a lot of conventions in a lot of the regions of the country which would have these people. So, right. you know, if, you know, Jim Bob, star of Super Dude on the CW, was coming to your town, like, you'd spend a lot of money. But if it's the third year that you've seen a cast member from one of your favorite shows in a row, it stops being special. It stops being a draw. And honestly, mm -hmm. it also used to only cost like twenty, thirty dollars to get an autograph. Or those prices keep going up. Uh, you know, you're looking at fifty, seventy-five dollars for an autograph of some of these people who five, six years ago you would have spent, you know, half of that. So it's it's really and it's in addition to how much it is to get into the place in the first place. Yeah, no, which and those prices have been going up as well. And mm -hmm. so the the problem is is that and and also then shows find like. People competing with Wizard World feel more pressure to bring in bigger names, which, of course, will tank a small show that doesn't know what it's doing. But mm -hmm. it also means that those shows bring down the perceived value of the Wizard World event because mm. the thing that Wizard is bringing is no longer, and the exception is the more common thing. And it's just not sustainable because those big-name guests cost a lot of money. They cost a lot of money right. to bring in, and it's hugely massive on the bottom line. And it's long term. We're gonna see the like the conventions that I know that are doing well are the ones who focus either on more niche or very limited in any of their you know they're very limited in who they bring in for guests. It's these the right. big the big box guest based cons. These autograph cons are like if they're 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 far too oversaturated, and it, there's just gonna be a collapse. There's, there's going to be a collapse. Well, yeah, because it can't. It, it had to hit a. We had to hit a ceiling at some point, and mm -hmm. yeah, there's not much else to say. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Oofda. Oofda, indeed. I mean, it's it's just sad, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, no, I agree. Well, because here's this is the problem is what's going to happen is that they're going to take out everything in their wake. You know what I mean? Right. It's so what's going to happen is that there's going to be with this oversaturation, people are going to see it as less special, but that's going to um to spool down because what's going to happen is there's going to be a collapse and then these cons won't exist mm -hmm. in the region. So they're oversaturated. That's it's. We're gonna see a bubble burst with it long term. I think. I mean, and maybe I'm wrong. You know, I think it's I'm, already happening. But honestly. what I mean is that I think we're gonna see a, a much. I think like right now, I think we're seeing the beginning of a bubble bursting. I think that in five years, um, this entire like, 
Uh, I I think that you're I I think you're going to see at least half the market disappear within the next five years. Not not just including Wizard World. Oh oh no, I agree. I think you're right. And that scares me. Yeah. But there's not a whole lot that we can do about it. I mean, it's just. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is one thing we can do. Let's do the yeah, vomit hat Steve challenge. Let's do the Vomit Hat Steve channel. You may be asking Yay. yourself at home why we're not doing a mailbag segment this episode, and the reason why is that uh, none of you wrote not in. Not one of you wrote to us. Technically, a couple people great. did, but nothing that they wanted to have read on air. And so, yeah, no, nobody nobody wrote in a letter that they wanted read on air this, this episode. So, uh, How dare you? We're you just going to at least write us once in a while. I mean, jeez. In great. Archimize, what were you doing? What Come were you on, doing, Archimize? Anyways, we do have the Vomit Hat Steve Challenge, cool. though. The Vomit Hat Steve Challenge is Fine. the part of the show where I read part of a book, and the challenge to you, the listener, is to guess what book it is. If you guess correctly, you get included in our Hall of Awesome. The benefits of the Hall of Awesome are as follows. One, we read your name aloud every episode in this segment. Two, we get, list your name on the website. Three, nothing else, but I always need to f- put a third thing in a list because that's what all the rhetorical stuff I was taught tells me to do. Now, we've been reading from the same book for a while, and someone got it. Someone got it. So there's a new name of the Hall of Awesome. We're adding Sakura Sunset to the Hall of Awesome. Um, Woo! Who guessed correctly that I was reading Orson Scott Card's Children of the Mind. Um she joins the following people who are also in the Hall of Awesome of Archimide Zero, Rain and Senti, Cheesy McDammy, Krista, Slithery D, Shameless Otaku, The Random Ramblings Fan, Core Fan, Capito, Chris Graham, Lily Source, Paper Godzilla, Cavsy, Minnesota Librarian, Sean Orange, and Keith Shizuo. <sighs> forgot to take a breath ahead of time. So I'll be adding your name to the website this week. Uh, and uh, now because she guessed, I have to pull up another book, which I will be reading an ebook version because my entire library is 500 miles away from me. But that's what the internet is for, man. And the line the line from the book, from the new book, which we're going to start right now, is Hungry sharks came about the vessel often when she neared islands or coral reefs. If you know what book that's from, go to nerdintet.com slash contact and go on the little form and tell us. Or if you'd like to tell us anything else go to that form write us a thing and we would have read it in the mailbag section that we normally have on the episode or alternatively if you don't feel like uh, writing it down and you just want to say it aloud yourself you can call our voicemail number at area code 414-375-0480 and leave us a message you should really do that we like hearing your voices yeah talk yeah. to us but, uh, I want to hear your voice. You specifically. Okay, Nick. You know who I'm talking to. Clearly you're talking to yourself. Oh. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> oh, boy. Aww. We should we should probably call it a show at this point. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do this before I start crying again. All right. Uh, as always... Um, from the Nerdodome, where we record Nerd and Tie, because we're definitely all in one place. <laughs> uh, I'm Nick Izumi. I'm Trey Dorn. I'm Gen Proc. And remember, you can subscribe to Nerd and Tie on iTunes. You can subscribe to us on Stitcher. You can subscribe, subscribe to us on the Google Play Store. And you can subscribe to this show on YouTube at youtube.com slash tr. A E G O R N. You can also follow Nick Azumi's videos, which at youtube.com slash Nick Azumi. You can also remember to follow us on Twitter, where we're Nerd and Tie. Follow us on Tumblr, where we're Nerd and Tie. Follow us on you on Facebook, where we're Nerd and Tie. For God's sakes, man, it's not hard. And, you know. It's the same thing everywhere. But And remember, on iTunes and on Stitcher, you should rate and review us. And same with mm-hmm. Google Play Store. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. And remember, you can sponsor an episode for just $20. And we would say something nice about you at the top of the hour. So, you know. Be like Ohio Kimono. Ohio Kimono it. did it. Why not you? 
And as always, keep on spocking in the free world. And in your mind, in your hearts, in the places that you dare dream, enjoy your internal dance party. <laughs> <laughs>